Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. Abraham Lincoln. What's going on friends? Welcome to another life lesson video here at Step Up to Greatness. Your resource for tips, tricks, advice, life hacks, stories for inspiration and motivation, moving you towards greatness without hesitation. I'm your greatness facilitator, Dustin Gross. Between these videos and my weekly podcast, SU2G, the Step Up to Greatness podcast, my goal is to help you find your healthiest and happiest version of yourself. To make sure you never miss an episode of either, make sure you hit that subscribe button or check them both out updated weekly at my personal page, stepuptogreatness.com. Summer is wrapping up and hopefully it has been an adventurous one for you and you've been able to get out, explore, and be active. Because no matter what side of social distancing you've been on, one thing is for certain, the quarantine 15 is real. And if you've been cooped up in your house and unable to do the normal physical activities you're used to, then you probably know what I mean. And now, with kids going back to school, people returning to work, and gyms opening back up, all with healthier guidelines, of course, then you're going to need some self-discipline to get yourself back to where you were before or where you want to be now. Now, self-discipline has a very cold and technical sound to it, but self-discipline is a good thing. After all, it's how we get things done. Self-discipline becomes the drive to complete every task. It builds us up in ways designed to make us stronger and, in the end, is the only reason we ever reach our goals. Over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about self-discipline. And I'm even going to have some awesome bonus content for you to check out when it comes to self-discipline down the line. Today, we're going to talk about some benefits to self-discipline you might not be aware of. Let's look at a few thoughts that might be new to you. One, self-discipline can make you a better person. We're not always the people we want to be. We act impulsively. We let emotions rule our actions. With self-discipline, we learn how to keep ourselves in check. We keep from making decisions based solely on emotion. We gain the ability to think things through. We even keep a more careful watch on our tongue as we consider our actions more carefully. That's probably a underemphasized benefit as we head into the home stretch of the political season. I know I've had to bite my tongue in some tough situations, but in doing so, I was able to listen and at least hear where people with opposing views are coming from. I still might not agree with them, but at least I can understand them a little better, and that wealth of knowledge helps me grow and see the world with a wider lens, which I think is a great quality to have. In short, self-discipline allows us to become the people we want to become and not the people we normally are. Self-discipline keeps us focused. If you're like most people, you probably struggle. If you're like most people, you <laughs> sorry. If you're like most people, you probably struggle with various distractions throughout the day. Whether you constantly are fussing at your smartphone or can't get enough of social media, the world constantly offers us mindless activity designed to keep us from doing what's important. With self-discipline, you're better able to focus. Distractions aren't as tempting, and we find it easier to get things done. Self-discipline helps us to succeed. What do you want out of life? Regardless of your goals, self-discipline is the impetus that will get you there. It's the grit that allows you to dig in and get things done. It's what drives us to learn, grow, and succeed where, where otherwise we might fail. Self-discipline improves your relationships. How are you at keeping your word? 
If you're self-disciplined, you keep your promises. Being someone who can be counted on to do what they say they will makes you more trustworthy and speaks well of your character. Add to this the ability to keep one's emotions under control and you will see why someone who is self-disciplined is considered the right sort of friend to have. Self-discipline means you stay calm. Being clear-headed in an emergency is a huge plus. Self-discipline means you're under control when you need to be. This trait manifests in a smaller, even more important way. Self-discipline often translates to self-respect, self-awareness, and self-confidence, meaning you're not easily offended. This equanimity means you're less likely to be stressed by criticism, nor will you fly off the handle easily. Self-discipline is not an easy trait to gain, but it's well worth the effort to cultivate it in yourself, especially given the multitude of benefits that come with practicing this level of self-control. Truly, you can only become your best self if first you're self-disciplined. Starting next week, we will begin doing some we will be begin going over some practices and how to develop self-discipline as we talk about how it is a learned behavior. But to get that ball rolling now, I'm going to give you some homework. Hey, the kids are going back to school, so you might as well get some homework too. For your homework, I want you to reflect on a time, event, or situation where you weren't self-disciplined and what happened as a result. Second, Think about how things would be if you were self-disciplined in the same situation. What would have been the result? Write these things down and put it somewhere you can read it each day. Make sure you don't beat yourself up about it. This is the focus on your life could be, not how it could have been. I'll use myself as an example. I mentioned the quarantine 15 earlier. I know it's real because I put the quarantine 15 on. Before all the shutdown started, I had a goal of losing 20 pounds and getting down to my wedding weight of four years ago. And I was on my way having lost about seven of it. But once COVID hit, I used it and being home with my family as a crutch to not staying as active and an opportunity to eat all the junk in the house that we had stored up, but I didn't have the time to eat before. I lacked the self-discipline to keep myself accountable and to stay on with my goals. As a result, I put on the extra weight and I was embarrassed to stop in and say hi to my old gym even though I missed the members like crazy and I would drive past them almost daily. And I was trying to figure out ways to appear more slimmed down as I introduced myself as a fitness professional, professional at my new gym. It affected my self-confidence and my relationships, both new and old. If I'd stuck with my goal and my routine using self-discipline, I wouldn't have had to worry about any of that and would have spent more of my time focused on my work and my relationships and I would have been much happier overall. Taking that information into account, now that I'm back to a normal work schedule, I'm back to developing my practices of self-discipline, working out on a consistent basis, and being more mindful about what I eat. Focusing in on my new goal of becoming the healthiest I've ever been as I prepare to turn the page on a decade next summer, I am feeling more confident, more myself, and more comfortable reconnecting with old friends. All because I'm establishing new practices of self discipline. Make sure you tune in next week as we discuss learning practices of self-discipline. In the meantime, remember it's okay to stumble, to trip up, or to fall down. Just remember to get back up, to keep moving forward, and step up to greatness. Peace!